I think we asked you this before, Dan, but why is it so important for you to play such a vital role in the submission process? I mean, why not have an intern do all of it? Yeah, well, you know, it, it's, it still goes back to the same thing that we've talked about before, is that it's our name on this. Of course, it's Holly Shore. It's not my personal name, but the filmmakers know, you know, Daniel Sol, Theo Dumont, Nicole Castro. They know the team behind the fest. It's, we take pride in that. So it, it's, it's always a challenge of, yes, we obviously need help in certain areas. Um, and that's, just, that's not one of them where I feel like it's, it's something we want to just completely pass on and say we're not going to be that, that involved in, in as far as programming or watching the films. We want to know what the films are, who's making them. You know, if we enjoy them, we think they're for our taste. Um, every festival has their films. Not every film is for every festival. Uh, that's, that's actually a line from John Gann. I stole that. So oh, okay. I was going to say, that's that. really good. <laughs> that's, that's his line. <laughs> I'm making sure he gets credit. John, you're watching. That's your line. Okay. <laughs> you know, and it's, but it's, a, it's very true. I've always felt that. He said it at panels or festival. It's very true. It's, it's not, we like certain films. Some festivals may not like. We've had films that are Oscar qualifying now that, that, are, that are from our festival, that won our festival, and then they don't get, they get rejected by other festivals. So it, it could be that even that, that, that varying, right? Where a film can make, you know, the Oscars and still get rejected by festivals. So, you know, not, not in that said, like we want to make sure that sort of our taste and our feeling and vibe of the films and, and we sort of give our sample approval of these films is, is, is still something we control and, you know, it, it's ours. So, so we take pride in that. So it's just important to still take part in that very heavily and not just say, hey, well, let's just pass it on to all these people and just have interns just watch films and, and then, you know, we'll just kind of like let them essentially handle that process. I, I, don't, I, don't, want us, I don't want us to really to get into that now if we had you know got to a point when it was you know overwhelming and it was just twelve thousand plus emissions or something in it then we really got to really reevaluate but we're growing and it's getting there but we're not there yet and you know i don't know what cap off we'll have at submissions or when it will peak out but you know for foreseeable future we still want to stay heavily involved in that would you say you're addicted to short films i guess so. <laughs> that's a pretty good yeah i mean uh, I, I guess now, yeah, I think so, maybe. I think early on it was more of the love of film and filmmaking and being involved with the festival and involved in the industry and the process. It was something we were excited about. Um, but now it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, as many films as I've watched over these years, as we've all watched, and, and, and just the process of discussing shorts and, you know, what their place is in this sort of hierarchy in the industry um, with the new age of streaming and everything, what does that mean for us and for shorts? Uh, we want to champion shorts, and we spend a lot of our time watching short films. I spend a heavy majority of my time outside of anything else I do as a hobby, outside of work and watching the films, is, is watching short films. So um, I guess with the controlling aspect of what we've, I've been outlining, how I'm saying I don't want to give up control and not watch films anymore, I guess you can, it's fair to say that I guess we're, we're, we're kind of addicted to shorts. <laughs> sure. You know, I think it's a, it's a, I haven't thought of it that way, but it actually, it, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> And I don't think that's a bad thing at all to <laughs> want control over, you know, putting, I know it's not your two personal or three personal names on it, yeah. but that, you know, you're, that's your brand. And so yeah. that, that makes sense. Yeah. It's so, when, when people, if someone's buying a ticket to attend the festival, uh, you know, they are, it's a representation of what we're programming, what we've chosen based on all the pool of submissions. Now, obviously we're, we're taking of what was, what came to us. If we had five sim films submitted and that's all we had, then we're picking from five films. Okay. But we have this many thousands of films we're picking from this pool. And, you know, we take pride in what that ends up being, what reflects on screen. It's very exciting to showcase what we feel are the next gen filmmakers or filmmakers are, are on the rise or just extremely talented or just thought provoking or unique and showing those voices and giving them a chance to screen. And it's, it's at our event. It's exciting. It's something we obviously, that's what we're doing. It's what it's for. Uh, you know, if we didn't like that, then, then what are we even doing this for? So it's, uh, yeah, it's something that we're, you know, of course going to be very proud, you know, very, very proud about. So. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's something that, you know, it's very important for us. You said next gen. Uh, do you see a difference in style or approach um, across the generation? So let's say when you first started mm -hmm. in the 30 seat theater that mm -hmm. I remember that, that one theater <laughs> that I went to and it was great. It was a lot of fun, even for the 30 people. But that was 15 years ago. So maybe Gen Xers were, were submitting then. Then you have millennials and now Gen Z. Do you see a difference in their filmmaking? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, there there is because it's just it's it, think of the time frame of what your capabilities were, right? I mean, back then, fifteen years ago, there was no YouTube, there was no nothing. Streaming was really not a thing yet. It was it was there was maybe at the time there was uh, might have been maybe iFilm, 
I think it was like the first site doing any streaming or anything where you could post video. It was like, I think that was basically about it. And that might have not even been the first year. It might have been like year two or three, maybe. Uh, it's 15 years now, a little, little fuzzy on the exact dates and details. But, um, you know, so, so the creation of content, what you're doing, your goal for making your films, back then was more thesis films. We got a ton of student films, thesis films. It was more of that. You didn't see as much of the, the uh, genre films, right? Like now we're seeing all these amazing visual effects in sci-fi films. And sci-fi shorts was not something, that wasn't something we really were seeing back then. But now because of, whether it's different technologies, different use of different cameras, the, the, the accessibility of visual effects and learning these things. Um, filmmakers are looking to post things on their own channels or maybe they have subscribers or then you have the younger generation of the millennials who you know, are into web series stuff and love web series and shows and, and all that. So that all is something that didn't, the web series, the word didn't exist back then. There was no such thing as a, what is a web series? There was no such thing 15 years ago. Now, web series and web content and YouTube Red, all this stuff, this is a, this is a real thing and this is where many many shows and creators are making stuff constantly all the time i mean there's a whole we could have a i mean there's plenty of festivals that just do web stuff we have a web series category you can have your own web series festival a standalone there's not much content out there so that's where you've seen a big change in kind of the, the added genres and the different styles of filmmaking and of course categories like web series which just didn't exist when we started this so literally we used adapt as we've gone along we added that category probably i think six or seven years into the festival maybe um, you know, before that, there was just, it wasn't something we were even, you know, going to do. So, uh, and when we just started, we're like, this is something even worth adding and that kind of thing. So we've seen how that's changed the sort of short, short content narrative. What about issue driven? Do you think 15 years ago, um, we were submitting as many shorts that were about specific issues and things that people are trying to solve? Has that always been a part of filmmaking, or do you think it's more so now with this new generation? I also think, I think more so. I think more so, yeah. I think, um, I mean, yeah, it's always part of filmmaking, especially, of course, documentary subject. I mean, your, your short, short docs are always going to tackle certain subjects, you know, whether it's political controversies or whatever. Um, you know, all that stuff, that's normal. That's, that's, we've seen that even that many years ago. But now, I mean, just even this, these last few years, you know, with, of course, political climate right now and Trump, we've seen a slew of films just being made about him and about that, the, the, the instability of, of things that go on and then how fast you can create the content to submit, right? Like they can make a film, a filmmaker can make a film. Now, not talking quality, production budget, whatever. You know, you can make it in a matter of days, a day, and, and have it cut and submit it. I mean, in a matter of days, you could actually submit that. Now, again, not talking quality or if it's good or not or whatever, but the, the, the submission comes in. So the film can be made and submitted that fast. So there is a sort of um, what's happening now can, can be seen in the reflection of the submissions each year, um, whether that's political stuff now or um, I'm trying to think of, say, five years ago, what was some of the, you know, just, just I guess, long story short, basically what, what you're seeing happen in a, in a climate of the world, we're seeing come through our, our way, uh, you know, much, uh, much faster. And it's just sort of like you're seeing the wave of how people think. It's kind of a cool thing, like the process of what's coming our way is based on filmmakers in the world, what they're making based on what's happening. And that wasn't so much the case as early on. Um, not to say that wasn't happening, but the accessibility of the, the filmmaking process and how fast it's, it's become as far as the shorts content, the shorts films being made is changed. So maybe that's just a, a product of that, but you, you see more and more of that. And back then we didn't see as much. It was a thesis film took more time to make and it was planning. And so you see just some student films and stuff shot on film. So that's obviously also a slower process. So it was different. It was just different. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, that said, also, we only did receive, you know, the first year, we're talking 23 movies, the second year, 170 years. So, you know, a different amount of films. But, <laughs> I mean, quickly we were up to around almost 1,000 in a few years. And, and then, so you're still getting a gauge of what's out there.